Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis for Mayu and Taxes 3.0 with me, Alpha Pi Omega and the Osman Vintivati. So in a series of wars that we have just finished fighting, we have gained quite a lot of territories in Greece and Southern Balkans. And today we are going to take a little bit of a step back and rest. I'm gonna do a couple of skips because A, we need to lose a little bit of that aggressive expansion and B, we have a number of plans that need to happen. Most of them are dealing with the new territories that we are coring, uh, where in uh, Bovdiv we want to build a level two fort, a modern castle. We want to build one also in Orestes. And of course, I would like to today uh, annex Byzantium or what's left of it, the sad small city of Philadelphia. But we're gonna take that one. Uh, we're gonna take that one and enjoy the spoils. So I think we can start with that actually. I don't know how much of aggressive expansion we're gonna get for that one tiny little province, but uh, if worse comes to worst, we can just occupy them indefinitely until we can take them. But I don't know if you like, uh, it is a good idea to have them still within our territory, independent and just not doing anything. Now, I was also thinking that uh, Crimea would be a pretty good target for us uh, as the next offensive war. They are allied with Derbent and Turkmenistan, so they can field quite a big army. But in these ones, Iran and Sirvan would join us. And we can also invite Akkuyunu into the fight, but um, they are currently fighting someone else for some reason. I don't know why we haven't been called into that war. But if we uh, get them in, I'm pretty sure that we will have such a numerical superiority that we can easily take Crimea and maybe even Priazovia. And... Well, Seversky Donets would be also good. The reason why I'm looking at this is that they are very easily connected to our capital and also they will work as an easy starting point for a conquest of the Genoese territory, which is the one that's actually really valuable. Okay, we got a bubonic plague outbreak spawned in Gurganj. Where, where is Gurganj? Central Asia. We could potentially see that. Gurganj. Yeah, that's not very far. That's gonna hit us eventually. Okay, still, let us just do this and be done with it. We're actually winning a little bit of uh, money here. I'm not entirely sure why. Do I have another ship? I do. Well, I'm gonna put you to the agency because um, we have put a lot of ships on the Baltic. Now let's strengthen that area as well so the conquest we're gonna attack Philadelphia we don't really need any help from anyone and let's just get on with it they have just a level 2 fortification here so it's not gonna be I mean this is gonna auto battle that's an immediate elimination so you know we're gonna go with light looting because we are after conquest Oh wow, they actually... I found that if you outnumber the enemy 10 to 1, you had an auto elimination. Was it 20 to 1? It's interesting. Mm, either way... Either way, they actually fought very well. Killing 163 of our soldiers is... Really interesting, considering the size comparison of those armies. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, conquering Crimea and then... Maybe even Priazovia and Siversky Donets would be a good idea, but I mean, this is um, a horde territory, so I don't really believe that it's going to give us a lot of aggressive expansion penalty, especially not against the European countries. But it could um, take off Mamluks or someone else because they are in the end a Sunni nation. The local bay has been killed. The bay of Afyon Kahara Hisar had been killed by Mitina soldiers and he had tried to stop the excessive extortion of the local population. Oh. Uh, let's stop this. If he was the good guy, I'm not gonna revolt the soldiers. And we could get longer battles, but considering the cost, I'm not really 
that phone over there. Actually, really interesting to see that we are still keeping up as the top dog in the technology game. That's good, especially in regards to our neighbors who are even three or more technologies behind us in uh, military tech. So that is really good. And when it comes to the Horde territory, they are way, way behind us. So their soldiers are going to be much worse and going to perform, you know, when they are going to perform, they're going to be much worse. Okay, the Orthodox Zealots are actually making me mad. Eski Shahir. So would they raise over here somewhere? Hmm. Eski Shahir is over here. But I think we don't really have any Orthodox provinces here, do we? They're all on the European side. Yeah, they're all over here. Wow, we've actually done a good job converting. Kerasus and the spot. Retail sun. Yeah, we have a lot of these territories over here that need to be converted. But Anatolia has been almost completed done. And you are Shiite? No, you're Sunni. Oh, Oriental religion. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one. Is it a heresy? State religion of Ramazan. Considers this heathen. Oh, that's interesting. Well, Fairfair is really holding. They have a high defensiveness here. But they shouldn't hold for much longer. So I'm hoping it's going to be an easy victory. Okay, it's not going to be an easy victory. But then we need to provoke the Orthodox Zealots, get rid of them. Then the Serbian Separatists, we're going to also trigger and be happy. The modern castles are going to take at least three more years to finish. Which is a big prerequisite for us for the next wars. Because we will have them strategically placed on our border provinces. And they will thus make it much easier for us to stop the enemy from, you know, taking places like Fyodor that get plundered a number of times. Pointlessly, really. Training harbor. Okay, so the siege of Philadelphia is over. That means we got you completely under our heel. Annexing you. Serbia and Genoa. It's going to trigger them a little bit. Uh... Honestly, I really don't want to fight Genoa. They got a huge amount of ships. Though their army is actually really not that strong. They don't have any vassals or puppets or anything. So they can field 6,000 men. And Serbia, after that unfortunate war with us, is also nowhere near threatening. So I don't think we really have to care about this. So let's just take it and do it as we wish. So take it and take also all of their money. It's not like they have a lot. And could they revoke course? They could. Okay, that makes it a little bit more useful for us. There's nothing we can do next. Okay. So send them demand. They will accept it. We can core it. And we have fulfilled the mission. Consolidate Anatolia. That is really good. I thought that we needed more of the Eastern Territories, but we don't. So, we have gained a permanent core or, or permanent claim on Lycaonia, on Galatia, on Cappadocia, on Sebastia, Psidia, Pamphylia, Malatia, and Kilikia. Gulf of Cyprus. Okay, Upper Macedonia and Syria, and safeguard Anatolia. Claim on Diyarbakir area. Sebastia area, which which is Sebastia area? Can I see? This is Cappadocia, and Sebastia, I guess, would be next to it. Would be this area. Oh, we have a stability drop. 
Okay, Sebasta is this one. So the only one that we actually don't have under our control is Sivash, which is part of the Duke Adils, which are a puppet of the Mamluks. It's not great. Iran and Siravan will join us, but we would still be outnumbered two to one. It's crazy. We will have to rely on the fact that Mamluks are likely to fall behind technologically in the next, uh, you know, decades and so. And with the, you know, increase in centralization, Iran is going to get more and more out of that territory. Because right now they are getting jack. Well, that's not exactly true. They get pretty good autonomy in many of these territories, really? And it's even getting better. Surprising. I keep underestimating... Well, I mean, there's still this, but... This is the more valuable area for them. Yeah, Fars. They got some really big cities. Mosul. The capital is also amazing. Baghdad. 18 and 18. They got how many people living there? I mean, you can check it here. 257,000 people. Well, our capital has a measly population of 141,000. It's crazy. And it feels like it's not even increasing. I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. I, I think the fort is going to help significantly with the feeling of security. And then our... Um, our people will have, but... Okay, so we're still bleeding money. It's also the war, we gained 43. It was given to us, we spent 94. We had about two and a half thousand people die during the siege. Okay, taxation, trade and stuff like that needs to increase. 57 loyalty here. Uh, what happened here? Why did the loyalty of the bureaucracy or the reach of the bureaucracy drop so much? It's not actually really good. Huh. Well, we'll need to look into that eventually. But for now, I think I'm going to skip ahead. We'll just let the game run for a bit and see what's going to come our way. Actually, we can, you know what? We could actually, before we do that, we could provoke you guys on a 5k. Okay, they raised the Nick there. That's a little bit different than what I expected, but fair enough. And I don't think we can provoke here. They need to be at, they need to be at least 50%. So, let's in the meantime assign diplomats. I'm going to put one on allies and one on, on subjects. I think they're both loyal, aren't they? Yeah, you guys are loyal. We're getting about 4.1. We can increase it a little bit. Royal marriage would be good. But we can because they're orthodox. But I think they can actually... Having a little marsh like this here would be good. Do we have a claim on something else here? That you do. So if we, for example, fight Hungary next, we could force them to give Prahova and Yelamita to us or direct it to Terra Romanesca and then we could pass it to them. I would really like to have a little bit of a vassalage situation in the... Um, in the Balkans, because that makes a ton of sense to me. It's historical, and it means that we're going to get more from those territories. Though, the coastal areas are easy for us to control. You can see that the autonomy here is dropping quite rapidly. Not everywhere, but in many places. Your non-core recently converted. So, wait, Sylvester... Is Sylvester a core or not? I think it might already be, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so... Uh, it's probably the separatism. Yeah, separatism... Yes, separatism is increasing it to 100. Without it, it would be somewhere around 85. Uh, it's recently conquered. is also not helping both the, the spot. You guys have roads, so it's going to be easy to connect you to Edirne. And 
onward. A musket or bow? An argument has broken out in the court over the importance of the musket compared to the traditional archer regiments, with the hopes of convincing Padishah Murad II that their role in the army is now becoming obsolete. A group of veteran archers have put on an impressive demonstration. Their grace, skill and accuracy was admired by many who were present. Of course archery should serve a primary role. It's time for this old man to retire. Oh, well. I mean, we're not gonna get the tech anytime soon. We're uh, eight of. Well. I mean, 5% is nothing, so of course, archery should serve a primary role. We don't care. Our tradition is extremely high, but nearly at 100. Discipline. Siege ability. I'm doing really good. The only issue that I have right now is the money. So let's have you drill. Let's have this run. Let's have this establish, and I'll be back once something interesting starts happening. It's October 1444, and I think I skipped enough time. A lot of things have happened in the meantime, so let me just walk you through it, and then we're gonna take further steps. So first of all, I had the ability to increase the size of our army to 12 infantry regiments, 6 cavalry regiments, and 4 uh, artillery regiments, which puts us as 22 out of 23, which is pretty good. We have also cored, of course, all of our provinces, and we have finished forts in most of them, most notably Constantinople, which now has a fort level 2, with uh, the fortification they have, it's actually a level 4 here, with a defensiveness of almost 100%, so we should be able to toward any siege that might come to our capital. But we also have a level 2 fort in Constanta, we have a level 2 fort in, um, in Fyodoro, and I'm wondering if we build it somewhere else. This is a level 1. We're building now a, one in Povdiv and Orestes, because those were the ones where we couldn't. But I'm not sure if... Vitilis has level 1. Okay, so that's all there were, right? Free. Fyodoro, oh, no, 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 we were building one over here as well, yep, in Lazistan. So that one also has a level T fort. I have also uh, looked quite excessively at our situation with the nobility, with the burghers. Uh, I managed to increase the stability back to plus one by donating some um, grain to the common people. And then I went through the possible reforms of our bureaucracy. There wasn't all that much there that we could do, but we can actually do one of the things here, and that's we can improve our tax farming from formal contracts to regulated leases. Uh, tax farming is an official profession overseen by a state official, one with a reasonable degree of regulation to prevent the worst abuses by tax farmers under the employ of the state. So basically what happened is that there was no permanent um, tax collection, there was not like a unified one, but you can actually get a contract that you would collect taxes for the state and then you pay the state uh, its share and kept a little bit. And we are moving from formal contracts to regulated leases. So it, we are making it a little bit more formalized than it was. It means we're going to get the better welfare. Uh, our peasants are going to live a better life. We're going to get extra state share of the tax revenue of 5%, which is great. And we're going to lower provincial corruption by 0 0.05. The issue here is that we're going to lose 200 uh, administrative power, 100 uh, military power. Elites are going to be mad, uh, so their loyalty is going to drop by 10. We're losing additional relations of 20 between elites and the state. Uh, we're losing 20 relations between bureaucrats and the state. Uh, we're losing... No, we're actually increasing the bureaucracy corruption by 20. We gain 5 state corruption and we lose 50% progress towards stability which will knock us down to zero again. While this is really harsh, we need to climb the ladder to a more formalized state, so let's do that. Uh, I'm not sure what the immediate impact is going to be to our uh, 
situation, but to do, do where is the tax farming? Remove it. Did they disappear? I'm not entirely sure. Offices bad, so I've tenure. In terms of office. Well, it's not here. Either way, uh, it means we will now gain a little bit more tax from the state. Again, it's not going to be any major thing, and we have gained a lot of penalties in relations and corruption, so for now it's going to probably seem like a bad choice, but in the long term it is going to help us. Uh, I also looked at a lot of these other things that we could do, but we need a bureaucratic influence of Ferne, or actual loyalty of Ferne, and because we have hit the loyalty right now quite significantly, it's going to take us a while before we can get there. But tax farming is one of the main ways how we uh, gather gold from our um, from our territory. So it is most likely a good idea to keep this up. Now let me see uh, what the... Ah, uh, here it is. It's back. Now let me see what the correct eff current effect is. Uh, so we don't see that. Okay, never mind. It's not showing us, but we should be getting a little bit more money eventually. Now, this has hurt our uh, relations with the estates significantly. So let's see if we can post populist reform. Clergy loyalty. Nationalist unrest. Align ourselves with the powerful among the clergy by taking a stand against populist reformers across the nation. Uh, okay. That increases revolt for about 10 years, but we get relations. I think we could actually do that. I was hoping that that would be that uh, piety thing that we could do, but it's not here at this point. Uh, why we should endow the church? I really don't want to do that. Uh, so let's just oppose the political popular reform. Okay, that hit us quite pretty heavily, but increased the relations with uh, clergy to almost 60, which is higher than we were before. Can we support the burgers? Support burger autonomy. Lowest progress towards stability, but gives us loyalty. Pardon smugglers. Provide tax relief. Let's provide tax relief. We checked that that did better than anything to us. And let's see if we can do something with the nobles. Marry a noble consort. Arrange a strategic marriage. Disown an unpopular relative. Gives us progress towards stability, increases relations, we lose legitimacy. It's actually fine. A strategic marriage. I like that one, but it gives nobility power. And marry a noble. I think our consul has died, didn't she? Yeah, so we could. Marry a noble consort and disown an unpopular relative. So let's do that and let's do the noble consort as well. So we now have J as the new consort. Hatijeh Osmanli. So relations with um, the nobility are 64. Burgers loyalty 64, clergy is 59. Cool. So that should stabilize this situation after our, you know, meddling with the system. And because we have built the forts, I feel much better about going after Kirim. Who have Crimea. They are allied with Durban and Turkmenistan, but we can ask our allies to join us, though, we'll outnumber them significantly. And we also have a much better technology and drilled army. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just move you guys all to Feodoro, which is gonna take a little bit of time. Actually, I did a mistake. We should probably deal with these Serbian. 
Okay, we should deal with the Serbian um, separatists first, and then we're gonna move and declare the war because that is what we want to do. Getting Crimea is gonna be good for us. We've been converting and lowering autonomy in the meantime. So I can show you while we wait for these to get back. Once 1st of January rolls around, uh, what the current situation is. I don't think we converted any province, but we have increased the, uh, 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 the share. You can see that the central area is becoming really nicely uh, docile. We have... Oh, we'll go down here. 24, 34, 33, 47. Izmit and Iskidar. Bursa is also almost completely under our control. So it's looking pretty good. What about Plovdiv? Now that it's... Yes, it's dropping. Now that we have actually uh, gained it as a core. You are drop... Okay, both of you are dropping as well. So good. We control all of the territory. With the exception of Philadelphia, but that one is going to fall in line when it is core. Which is gonna happen in about a couple of months. That is good. Okay, so where will the Serbian separatists raise? Dospot. Uh, over here. So you move there, my love, these. Could invest in a new technology. By the way, the block books are going to be really good for us. And I was looking and I think we're gonna really go with the standing army ideas. The logistics are also really good. They heavily lower attrition and increase our supply. So I was thinking about that, but standing army seems the best one because it gives us a huge boost to manpower, recovery, growth, and so on. After that, I would probably like uh, to go with the economic ideas and the mercantilism ideas and diplomacy ideas. Those are the ones that I would wish to get next. But for now, the army, as we are going to heavily uh, rely on expansion, so it has the precedence. So wait, um, it's here. And of course they raised elsewhere, but it's only 14,000 of them, so it's not a major thing. Okay. Nice. Yeah, the shock phase is definitely our forte. Okay, will they be eliminated or will they move? Not entirely sure what's gonna happen with them. Yeah, they're moving. So let's follow them and finish up the job. Okay, you are idle. So let's make you free. And send you back here. Okay, this is a good time to show you the religion. I don't think we've gained anything. I'm working on the Tilsa, converting that one and uh, the spot pretty heavily. Those are always uh, appearing and Kerasos, which is on the other side of our territory. Over here. And we're trying to expand. So the spot constant. Uh, yeah, we just finished with you so let's go with the spot. Haven't really checked what the situation there is. Ah, we're almost done. Almost done. Okay, does Crimea have any ships? Nope. Okay, so we're safe. So let's move you all to Fyodorov and take it from there. Okay, how's Puvdiv doing? Trauma has been removed completely. It's fine. Oh, by the way, we finished the fort in Constantinople, so I thought it might be a good idea to invest 10 in the academia in Constantinople, because I would like to see if it helps. Wait, didn't I? Oh, did we just finish both of them? 
I guess we did. Okay, so Vitios are next. Oh, why are you? Oh, it's the unrest again. Uh, oh, well. I mean, that's what we get for aligning with the estates. But it needs to happen, you know. It needs to happen. Get him bleeding more gold. Uh, by the way, I checked Akkuyono is locked with... Um, oh, they're no longer locked. Okay, good. They were at war with the Kazakh for some reason. And despite the Kazakh... I don't know how it ended, but it seems like they won. So I had a bit weird. Would they join us now? In war? They wouldn't. The war exhaustion is massive. Okay. But Iran and Sirman will. And that's more than enough for our plans. And good reasons, because we're bleeding out cash like there's no tomorrow. Crimea is gonna fall relatively quickly. I think that defensiveness is awful. Corruption, prestige. Yeah, there's no bonuses, but they do have a fort. And we could take... I, I Maybe we can take all this territory. If that would work, that would be great. But we'll just have to see. Okay. So, let us declare war. And see how this war is going to happen. Uh, what is also important to say is that they are allied with Durban and Turkmenistan. Durban is over here. I don't know if they have any valuable provinces. Wow, this one has a huge rural development. That's gonna be a boon for our allies to deal with. Actually, all of their territory is very valuable. And where is the uh, where is the other one? Turkmenistan? Is it here? Yeah. Do they have just like two two provinces? Three, it seems. I don't think they are worth anything really. The capital is Gurganj, but I don't think we'll be able to reach it. Okay, so let me just declare the war now and see what's gonna happen. Okay, so we outnumber them significantly. Go. I'm actually gonna try to save a little bit of money by lowering some of these forts again. We'll keep Nigde and the border forts up, but I don't really think we need to keep all of them up because we have like Tira is never going to get sieged. Wait, it's not Tira, it's uh, Ionia. Bursa uh, also doesn't need a fort. Anguru doesn't need this fort raised. I'll keep Nigda because it's on the border, but uh, Iskidar doesn't need that. Iskidar is a prime candidate actually to be uh, a level 2 fort as well. I'd like to have, just for roleplay reasons, I'd like to have massive forts and they're going to be mostly populated in... Actually, you know what, let's from now on, just for roleplay reasons, keep the forts in Constantine and Iskidar always raised. Because that seems like something that would happen in real life. Let's go with severe looting. I don't think that these provinces are going to give us much, but in case we can reach Darbant eventually, it would be maybe a good idea. So you guys are going to have a field day with that, won't you? Turkish siege ability, corruption, prestige, war exhaustion. Yeah, they're, they're done. I have a fishing harbor and irrigation. That's actually pretty good. Getting that is not a bad idea. Gonna go well with our own territory. And you don't have roads either. So building roads in these two areas and connecting them might not be a bad idea. Batulus, I forgot about you. That's Ordulus. This one is Batulus. So 
Well, sort of. Oh, wow. It's actually another small army. Okay, so Crimea has been taken, which is... And we can move to Piazovia. And on that note, I'm going to end the episode here and start the next one where we are going to continue with this war.